time so we understand how deeply we have been penetrated by the fabulous left of the United of the world and what they have done to this country. Many of you feel it, you sense it, but you don't know where it's coming from. So let's go into the 1960s, the civil rights movement, the war on poverty, and the new left. And you'll find out exactly who they are and exactly what they have done and exactly what they want to do in the future of the United States of America. So where shall we begin? This could take hours for us to do this. Some of these names may be familiar to you, such as the so Students for Democrat Society, Tom Hayden. New Left Students for Democratic Society, SDS. It had activists such as Tom Hayden, who was related to Jane Fonda, as you may remember. Those are distant memories, right? Well, then you had groups like Marxism, Leninism, the Progressive Labor Party. Then in the 1970s, there emerged the Black Power Movement and the Hippie Movements. Now, that's possibly where we should begin today, because the Black Power Movement of today, as exemplified by the Black Lives Matter street thugs, in my opinion, is an offshoot of the early socialist, communist, anarchist movements in the United States of America. And if you don't understand your history, you're condemned to repeat it. But that's what we're living through right now. What about the hippie movement? Well, I think that speaks for itself. Many of them are now running uh, the media, running uh, uh, the government, and running academia. Doesn't that tell you all you need to know? So look into that, and you'll see where the, uh, the, the bridge is between anarchism, socialism, Marxism, and progressivism. And you'll find out that you can say that Bernie Sanders' current campaign represents completely everything I've just told you about. He, in fact, calls himself a democratic socialist who's running as an independent. But he's never really been a democratic socialist. He has always been a radical fanatic. Always. And you must understand that. But there are others in the government and others in organizations, uh, such as Occupy groups, Occupy Wall Street, for example, the Occupy movement, all offshoots of this radical leftism I am talking about. And so ask yourself now what I'm talking about and why I'm talking about it, because I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking ahead to when Donald Trump wins by a landslide in the election come next November, and when he takes office in January of 2017, that's when his hard work will actually begin, because none of these organizations will be gone. In fact, I can guarantee you as I sit here, their, net, their, their nests are being feathered by the Obama administration as quickly as possible to make certain that they are untouchable uh, like the five families once were in the United States of America. These left-wing groups are far more damaging than any organized criminal organization the nation has ever seen in terms of the damage to the social order. That is a definitive blanket statement that I can support with pages upon pages of references, but I can't do it in a talk show uh, on the cuff. I think I've done a pretty good job verbally. One day I'll do it in the written form, but right now I'm going to continue to give you a thumbnail sketch of the dangerous leftist organizations in the United States of America and those groups that need to be looked into when Donald Trump becomes president and de defunded and investigated for criminal activity. There are other groups, and you can name them if you want. I've named some of, some of them. Some of them you may know. Some of them you may not know. But let's look into them together. What groups have I not mentioned so far uh, that you think would be uh, worthy of investigation by a new government in order to save the fabric of our society. Anybody have any ideas? Let's go to KKOH in Reno. James, who's on that list for you? Hello, I, this is Father James. I'm serving Orthodox priest, and I, I agree with you, and I believe NPR and Media Matters, the propaganda organizations for the state we don't want. <laughs> yes, Media Matters is funded primarily by George Soros. It was run in cahoots with Podesta. It was closely tied to Hillary Clinton during the period that I was banned in Britain, and I think their fingerprints are all over the smear campaign against me and many others in the conservative movement in the United States of America. I agree that they should be at the top of the list. They're amongst the most evil anti-Americans in the United States today, in my estimation, Father. Now, why are you, as, as a man uh, of religion, interested in this? What have they done to you? Uh, well, I just see them propaganda their propaganda affecting people uh, and so it's become so much a part of their fabric of thinking that uh, they can't it's hard for a person to get out of it yeah okay okay it's a cult these leftist groups are like a cult and 
they then feed on each other. They sit around smoking pot, drinking cheap wine, and then they start talking to each other with a joke of how they can get over on society, what they can do to disrupt the vote, what they can do to stuff ballots, what they can do to vote ten times, what they can do to have illegal aliens vote, and then they start feeding on each other of, uh, Robbie, what would you do? How would you do it? And your, and your, uh, Mary, how would you do it? And then one builds upon the other because no one's ever slapped them down. No one has ever come along and slapped them down for the damage they are doing to this nation. That's what I have to say to you. But many of you have missed some of the most important of these left-wing organizations. And we have one now on WDRC Radio. Ron, who's on your list of organizations that have done grave damage to the social order? Yes, the Honorable Reverend Al Sharpton. And the yes, how could we forget that friendly Al Sharpton and the name of his group is? NAM, National Action Network. Right. And how many times has this fine human being been invited into the White House by our even finer president? Does oh. anyone know? Can you? And, and what damage has this organization done to America in your estimation? Oh, it's been endless. How many decades? If you Google his name, and it's he has under his name, he's become Barack Obama's go-to black leader. And now, and now he's blasting Hollywood, which is a joke in itself. Can you believe that it was Al Sharpton, a street agitator, who nominated Loretta Lynch to become our attorney general? Can you imagine that? I'm not surprised. With this. this is how deep these people go in their damage to the social order of this country. And unless they are turned back in 2017, there is no hope for this nation. That's why I'm not going to sit here bellyache about Democrat, Republican, and Barack Obama. Forget about it. I'm looking ahead, and I'm telling you what needs to be done. This is one man's opinion. Remember what I do for a living. I do talk, but I also write. And in order to write, I have to think. And in order to write books that are viable, I have to be ahead of the curve. So I'm just telling you what needs to be done. And I'll tell you something else. If you'll help me put this list together today and in the ensuing weeks and months on the Savage Nation, I will make sure it gets into the right hands in the right campaign. Let's put it to you that, that way. And if you have any evidence of criminal activity by any of these organizations, we would be especially interested in it. It's one thing to say you don't like their politics, and I can understand that. But it's another thing to say, you know, Michael, I once worked for them, or my sister worked for them, and I happen to know that they were doing this, they were doing that, they were stealing funds, they were that, they weren't paying taxes, they're supposed to be non-profit, they were living high on the hog, they got money from Russia, they got money from China, they got money from Indochina, they got money from Indonesia, they got money from the moon, they didn't report it, I can give you the proof. Oh, please, save it for me, will you please? And we'll get it into the right hands at the right time. Now, at some point today, and I don't think I'm going to have the time, I want to go in the, in, in the same direction but from another approach. What I have been saying for the last hour and 20 minutes on the Savage Nation is quite revolutionary to many people. They're going to say, well, what, is he crazy? Is this right-winger nuts? He's going, to, he's going to help the government, the new government, go after these legitimate social organizations? Well, are they legitimate and are they social organizations? I would argue that many of them are not legitimate. They may be legal, but that doesn't make them legitimate social organizations. There are a lot of things that are legal that I disagree with, and this is one of them. You, just because you have a legal organization and you're, uh, you're working around the clock to promote, let's say, activities that are immoral or antisocial doesn't mean that I have to agree with you. And I think that any new administration that cares about the middle class has to investigate you. So I would suggest if any of you are members of these organizations that you really get your books in order and you really start making certain that you're not vulnerable to any kind of federal investigation because you have had seven of the best years of your life. And let me tell you something. After your protexia is gone from the White House, all bets are off. As a man who has been blacklisted by the uh, British government and blacklisted by Fox News, I know something about blacklists. And something the American left has not experienced in 50 years is being on such a blacklist. And there are such groups that need to be investigated for the damage they have done, are doing, and will do unless they are stopped by a new Congress in 2017. So let's name some of them in addition to the names I've given you. Are you ready for them? American Society for Muslim Advancement. 
Alliance for Democracy, Amnesty International, Center for American Progress, Center for Media and Democracy, Center for Science and the Public Interest, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, Citizens Action, Citizens Fund, Color of Change, Common Assets Defense Fund, Cordoba Initiative. Let's see, I'm, I'm going down a list and coming up with some names that you m may recognize of organizations, organizations that I consider to be very, very left-wing and worthy of investigation. Media Matters for America, MoveOn.org, ProPublica, funded by Soros, ProPublica, Inc., Netroots Nation. Some would include the Service Employees International Union as a subversive organization, the SEIU. And by the way, the president of that organization, that big union that gave us Governor Brown, said two weeks ago that she was shocked that 64% of her membership is interested in voting for Donald Trump. So don't assume that the organizations they control are composed of members who also want to un undo the American way. T the Tide Center, the Tide Center Projects, Tides Foundation, Transnational Resource and Action Center, Turning Point Project, uh, Youth Empowerment Center. Now, those are just some. How about when we look into the American religious left and its funders? This gets very interesting. It's like a spider web. The Rockefeller Brothers Fund, the Lilly Endowment, the Bain Foundation, the Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, <clears throat> the Blue Moon Fund, the Joyce Foundation, the HKH Foundation, Dolan Charitable Trust, Vanguard Foundation, Arca Foundation, Saul Alinsky Back of the Yards Community Council, National Hip Hop Political Convention, the Cuban Council of Churches, Pastors for Peace, Progressive Religious Partnership, People for the American Way, uh, Interfaith Alliance, Interfaith Worker Justice, American Friends Service Committee, Clergy Leadership Network, America Coming Together, National Council of Churches, Interfaith Center on Corporate Responsibility. I'm just giving you a little sketch of the radical American left to explain to you how we got where we are and who the head of the snake is. The head of the snake is enjoying himself in the White House. These are all of the grassroots groups that have worked for so many years to give us what we now have, which is a debased military, a debased America, and the best is yet to come, according to the leader of the free world, Barack Obama, who gave a speech today saying he is going to squeeze the last drop of the year out of the year to make all the change he possibly can. I hope you get the drift. I hope you understand that our real work begins after Donald Trump wins by a majority landslide of 75-25 and the Congress convenes in 2017. Good night. Savage.